There are certain things on YouTube that you cannot talk about. They're forbidden. However, there's an exception to this, which I found under the YouTube misinformation policy or guidelines. Let's look at the medical misinformation policy, vaccine misinformation. Claims that contradict health authority and World Health Organization guidance on the safety, efficacy, and ingredients of currently administered and approved vaccines. Content alleging that vaccines cause chronic side effects outside the rare side effects that are recognized by the health authorities. A little bit further down, it says educational, documentary, scientific, or artistic content. We may allow content that violates the misinformation policies noted on this page if that content includes additional context of the video, audio, title, or description. This is not a pass to promote misinformation. Additional content may include countervailing views. They're allowing me to potentially say some opposing viewpoints, so that's good. YouTube also believes people should be able to share their own experiences, including personal experiences with vaccines, for example. This means that we may make exceptions for content in which creators describe firsthand experiences from themselves or their family. Just as my disclaimer, I'm not going to give you any conclusions. I just want to give you the data, a series of pieces of information, and you make up your own mind. The first information I want to share with you is a series of before and afters using high doses of vitamin D3. What I'm going to show you is quite significant as far as the before and afters on autoimmune diseases. In this first image, this person had an autoimmune disease called alopecia. You can see before and after. Let's look at the second one. It's another alopecia with high doses of vitamin D3. Here's the next one, psoriasis and vitamin D. Look at the before and afters. I wanted you to see there is definitely something significant about using high doses of vitamin D3 and its association or connection with autoimmune disease. The second piece of information is a quote from Dr. Bruce Hollis. There's been a number of studies done on vitamin D, mostly all positive. And those data are really valuable because those look at lifestyle over a long period of change, but they're discarded when studies like vital say, oh, this is all BS. If you can put an autoimmune disease into remission with high doses of vitamin D3, does that mean those conditions were really a deficiency of vitamin D to begin with? We can't make the conclusion that vitamin D deficiency will cause an autoimmune disease. We can't say that unless it happens in all the cases, which it doesn't. The next piece of information, I want to show you this graph right here. This graph shows the massive spike in autoimmune diseases in the United States. MS, celiac, Crohn's, type 1 diabetes. Autoimmune diseases have surpassed heart disease and cancer. It is the number one problem. The question is, what the heck is going on? Is it the glyphosate in the food? Could it be genetics? So there's a lot of confusion in this area. So I kept looking at this problem from all different angles and I found some more information I want to share with you so you can make up your own mind. First question though, what is an autoimmune disease? Well, it's a situation where your own immune system is attacking your own tissues and it's creating inflammation. And there's a lot of different autoimmune diseases out there and you can have pretty much an autoimmune disease to any tissue or even a hormone or even a structural part of your body where your body is developing antibodies against itself. If you're female and you would have a baby and you had something growing in you, how would the body know that that's not a tumor and start attacking it? The next piece of information I'm gonna share with you is out of this book. Celiac disease has been strongly associated with some alteration in certain genes. There's a genetic component to this problem too. Let me show you this other piece of information. I don't know if you can see this right here. On the left, you'll see the autoimmune disease. And on the right, you'll see the genetic variation or alteration involved. If you have a very specific variation in a gene, you're more vulnerable to get a certain autoimmune disease. Why would our bodies make a gene or adapt to something to make your genetics more susceptible to an autoimmune disease. If you look further into this, each one of these genetic variation also has a strength. The person would be less likely to acquire a viral infection, protection against certain parasites because of the heightened immune surveillance. The purpose of that is to help us survive. And there's even some data. I don't know if it's in human studies, but I know it's in animal studies. Certain animals tend to mate based on a more diverse immune system. So that way the child has 
more protection to survive longer. It's just a theory, but there's some interesting data on that point. I want to just cover a few more points in this book right here. They're talking about individual vaccines and what autoimmune diseases they might trigger towards development of autoimmune disease, typically requiring some environmental trigger to evolve into a full-blown disease state. Being in practice, I've observed when people go through losses, a loss of a loved one, notice a high percentage of them develop an autoimmune disease. So that would be a trigger. The vaccine for Lyme disease is capable of triggering arthritis in genetically susceptible hamsters. 100% of the hamsters develop arthritis. These manifestations pointed to subclinical, slowly evolving disease, whether this disease could eventually progress into its full-blown clinical apparent form depends on whether the individual was further exposed to the immune stimuli, including subsequent vaccinations. This is really what I want to show you right here. What we're looking at is the number of vaccines given to children in 1950. It was like five. Now it's in the 30s. So you can see this huge spike of vaccines to children. The CDC recommends 69 doses of 16 vaccines from birth to age 18. Infants receive 33 doses of over a dozen vaccinations by 15 months. One vaccine is given hours after birth and 38 doses of 15 vaccines by age two. Could all these vaccines overstimulate an already fragile immune system? Is it possible that you can overdo it? That's a question that I'm not going to answer. I'm just giving you the data. It's just so weird that we can't talk about it. We can't even have discussion about it. I'm not making this stuff up. I'm taking this right out of this textbook right here. Is it the best idea in the world to bypass our own immune system? If we actually layer that problem with a baby that went through C-section, that's now going to restrict the microbiome. And by the way, if that's your situation, I would recommend start taking a certain probiotic to refeed the microbes that are missing. Or let's say a child wasn't breastfed. They don't get the friendly bacteria in the breast milk. Instead, they're fed infant formula. On top of that, you layer that with the vaccines. I mean, it's kind of creating a perfect storm. How many people in general are deficient in vitamin D? If vitamin D can take an autoimmune disease and put it into remission, wouldn't it be a central thing if someone had to take a vaccine just to take more vitamin D to maybe add some protection? I wanted to give you this information and let you decide. Please comment down below and tell me what you think. Before you go real quick, I have a course entitled How to Bulletproof Your Immune System. It's a free course. I want you to take it, and here's why. Here's you, here is your environment. Everyone is focused on this over here, avoiding your environment. But what about here? What about strengthening your immune system? That's what's missing. This course will show you how to bulletproof yourself, and so you can tolerate and resist your environment much better by strengthening your own immune system. I put a link down in the description right down below. Check it out and get signed up today. Hey, before